So it's one of my favorite parts of this season. Not only is the beauty of the outdoors and everything blooming and all the wonderful colors. I, I, I don't watch much college basketball until right now. We, we're, we're at the Sweet 16, I think they call it. And so I start watching and, and I start f following the last couple of games. But I've, been, I've got a friend who's been texting me pretty regularly. And I love a good comeback story. And, and, I, and I love uh, a last minute uh, sort of victory. And so it, that this is always, there's always so much excitement as uh, some team comes from 20 back to win the game or somebody shoots one and, and from half court they just throw something up and it goes in and then everybody storms the court and it's, and it's, uh, you know, it's just a wonderful, just a wonderful experience. They, there's a, a, a little school from... I want to say it's somewhere up north. Uh, it may be uh, New, Jersey. New Jersey. I was going to say maybe New Jersey. It's uh, 2,000, maybe less less than that. And uh, they're in the Sweet 16, which is unheard of, because they were way down. They they must have they must have be paying those kids really good money to play basketball for them. Uh, but they, they we we can do that kind of thing now. I think in college basketball. But they're winning and and upsetting and and so it's been it's been exciting to watch. And all that to say is, uh, you guys are my comeback team of the year, all of you on this side. Last few weeks, it's been kind of sparse over here, and these folks over here have been way ahead, and it's you know, the, not that we're counting or anything. You guys, I still love you. You're doing great. But it was, it was just kind of like, you know, we're dying over here, and, and uh, you've made a comeback, and so I'm so proud of you. Uh, you just, uh, when you leave today, just leave saying the pastor's proud of us, God's proud of us, and, and uh, we're, we're, we're coming on strong here at the end. I want to say to all of you at home, we've got cameras on both walls now, and when you're at home, make sure you divide left and right a little bit so we keep it balanced at home. You know, just, go, just uh, don't sit too close together, and, and, and we don't know how to divide you up if you do that. So uh, this is what happens when you have to fill time as the choir goes down and sits down. But we're, uh, we're as we hear today, God's word, uh, Mark chapter 2, verses 1 through 12, we hear these words. A few days later, when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no one, no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. Some men came, bringing to him a paralyzed man carried by four of them, and since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and then lowered the man the mat was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he, he said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, Why does this fellow talk like that? He's blasphemy." Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately, Jesus knew in his spirit that this is what they were thinking in their hearts. And he said to them, Why are you thinking these things? Which is easier to say to this paralyzed man, Your sins are forgiven? Or to say, Get up, take your mat, and walk. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority to, on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. He got up, took his mat, and walked out in full view of them all. This amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, we have never seen anything like this. Friends, these are God's good words. May he add his blessings upon them. So for a few weeks, we're, we're looking at uh, some of the scripture, the miracles of Jesus, what Jesus is doing, going through some different gospel stories. The Bible says faith comes from hearing, hearing from the word of God. We don't get to see many of these kinds of miracles in our world anymore, at least in our, our, our parts of it. Uh, but I believe every single word of it. And so I want us to, to lift that back up so that God might might lift our spirits and help us to see that God still does miracles and uh, that Jesus is still alive and working in our world. In recent weeks, a couple of weeks back, we talked about the, the inner strength that we find in facing this world, the inner strength that comes from a relationship with God 
and through the Holy Spirit that God strengthened us to, to be able to face all of the, the things that we're facing in today's world, that we are not weak, uh, we are not overcome, that God is faithful and powerful, and he has given us the power of the resurrection, which we are soon to celebrate with Easter. Last week, we talked for a few moments about Peter walking on water. And that story just reminds me so much that when we walk out on the water, sometimes if we take our eyes off Jesus, what, whatever the water might be, whatever our struggle is, it's so easy to keep focusing on what the problem is that we forget the one who holds us up and, and helps us to get back in the boat. There's a, a, a wonderful saying that I, I, I ran into, I think it was last year with all the things that were going on in, in, some, in, in COVID and sometimes people say, but you don't know what, what's going on in my world. And, and I just want to share this again, that we, we sometimes find ourselves saying, well, you know, we're all in the same boat. And I love the saying, which was, no, we're all in the same storm, but we're not always all in the same boat. And so we have to be compassionate and kind to each other. And each of us, uh, we need to spend some time reaching out to God and walking with, with Christ uh, to, to find that, that stable place that he has for us. So today, after we've looked at the internal, the inner strength that we have and the strength that we find with God as well, I want us this, this morning to talk a little bit about the importance of godly friendships and the importance of having people in our lives that give us strength as well. It's, it's very important to have inner strength, but you know, sometimes we're just so weak, it's hard to, it's hard to get up on our own. And we live in a society which, which often focuses on just, just be strong, be a self-made man or a self-made woman. And, and there are certainly some people that have overcome more than others in this world and society, but even the, 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 the most successful of a, a, a self-made man or woman, if you were to go back and look at their life, somebody helped them along the way. Many people helped them along the way. There was a grandmother, a parent, a friend. There was a, a mentor. There was somebody that, that was there to encourage them to become more than they could be on their own. And this morning we have this, this evidence in our, in our scriptures of the importance of faith but also faith that comes from being together. It, there's a, a, an especially a challenge during these last couple of years because so many of us have had to retreat into our homes and to be by ourselves that we've missed the opportunity uh, to be together as much as we can. And I know, I don't know about you, but I sure, I sure love not only to see smiling faces, but friendly faces and encouragement and people who pray and, and you've been been so good about over the last couple of years to to pray for me and to call me and text me and make sure I'm doing okay and I've tried to do that in return but together we we we're not just uh, we're Christians we're individual Christians we're members of Mars Hill Church but we're not Mars Hill Church by ourselves we are Mars Hill Church with each other we are Christians uh, not individually, I am a Christian. Certainly, each of us makes that decision, but we are Christians. We are the saints, as Paul often speaks, uh, by, uh, by our nature of being together. In, in Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews uh, 10, 24, and 25 says, let us consider how to encourage one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of son, some. And in this relationship, I, I would, again, I, I, I kind of jokingly say if a woman had written this passage, we'd know a lot more about it. We'd know how long the four people and the fella had been friends, uh, what kind of connection, if they were cousins, perhaps. We'd know about the mat, what color it was, and how the mat had been handed down from generation to generation, and how it was connected. To, there's just so much. Uh, the Bible would be, it would be this, this big, but I would love to know to be able to look at some of these things, and we are left this morning and often to fill in our own imagination. But Jesus is teaching, and he's got so many people outside the the, the, the doors, the rooms full, everybody's outside in the windows, everywhere. And these people, they're carrying their friend. He's paralyzed. He's unable to get to, to Jesus. And, they, and they've, they've heard that he is a miracle worker. And they just believe that if we can get 
our friend to him, something miraculous is going to happen. Can you imagine as they pull, as they pull into the parking lot? You've, you've been, we've, we've had those, maybe it's an Easter Sunday, maybe it's some other occasion, and we come in, we're excited to be here, we're coming, and there's no parking. And, and, and we're like, we've got to find a grab a lot, we're going to miss our, 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 the opening song, we're going to miss the prayers, and we find ourselves just, and, it, and I don't know about you, when I'm running behind, and I hate to run behind, I love to be places early, but when I'm running behind, it seems like everything else then works against me to make me run behind more. And so as these people, I can't imagine what they were going through as these friends when they were bringing, bringing their friend to Jesus, maybe about, maybe about a third of the way, the fellow says, hey, I hate to be a pain, but I really got to go to the bathroom. Oh no, we got to get to Jesus. Um, the other one, maybe another one gets a leg cramp. There are all sorts of things. We don't know why they're late, but it, it seems like in the passage, they're just running a little bit behind. And, and so maybe they, it, it would have been easy for them, right, to just say, well, we'll find out what his next place is going to be, and we'll just, we'll work and try to be there earlier. Or we're running late, let's just go home and, and forget about it. Uh, but no, they said, you know, we're, we, it, there was something in them that said, no, today is the day and today is the opportunity to bring our friend to Jesus. And so when they looked around and couldn't find a way in through the door, front, back, or through the windows, it, they didn't let it stop them, which I was just, um, I, I've always really loved this part of the story is that they, they, they knew that a lot of the houses, that behind their houses they would often have a ladder and it would get, get access to the roof and they could get up on the roof and, and the roofs, well, they, they, they came prepared apparently. We're, 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 we may be late, but we're going we're gonna to be prepared. And when they got up and they couldn't get there, what did they do? They made a mess. You know, I think there's something to be said about making a mess in the kingdom of God. We as Presbyterians over the years, there's, a, there's been a, a saying about us is that we do things decently and in order. And, and we, we, we often take that to mean, well, we just follow the rules. And when, when we hit obstacles, we retreat, we form another committee, and we study it for another year or two. Then we put it in the budget, and then we're going to fix it somewhere down the road. Uh, these followers uh, of Christ, they said, no, it's going to be a mess. Some people aren't going to like it. It's going to mess up the carpet. We're going to do it anyway. Now, I don't always recommend that kind of. I, I, it, 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 it was really getting close to the, the kind of mindset. Well, you know, we'll, we'll do it first and ask for permission later. Uh, that, that part of me that studied and become a good Presbyterian sometimes said, oh, no, no, we shouldn't do that. Unless, you know, it's like I say about, about change. I don't mind change as long as I'm the one that uh, either is doing it or don't have to do it. And uh, they, they, uh, they, they were making a mess. I don't mind people making a mess as long as I'm the one that thinks it's a good idea. But this time they were not going to be delayed. And so they made a, a hole in the, in the roof and they lowered him down to, to the, the man line, the mat, the, down onto the ground. And instead of being upset because maybe his, his plan for the evening was upset or maybe he was speaking to them and his message was being interrupted, uh, as, as sometimes happened, it says that he saw their faith and said to the paralyzed man, son, your sins are forgiven. Now, I've always, in the, in, in, and this is the beauty of, of reading God's Word, it, and it being sh it's not only sharper than a two-edged sword, but it is alive and active, and you can read a lot of books, and they just say what they say. You can highlight them, and you can go back and read them over and over again. It just says what it says. But the Bible, I, I, sometimes I'll read it, and, and, and God will give me either a different application or a different insight to His Word because His Word is still alive. And for the years, I've looked at this scripture, and, and, I've, and I've, I've just kind of seen the, the paralyzed man as being passive, and he's just kind of laying there, and, the, and the, the, the faith of the four, they brought him to Jesus, and Jesus saw it and healed him. But as I was reading it this week and praying, it was, it, I just had the thought, well, what about his faith as well? 
who is Jesus speaking to him? It, it could have very well been just the four people who are bringing this man to Jesus, but it could have been the faith of the friends and the paralyzed man. That Jesus saw something in that encounter, and that made me start to stop and think about what kind of conversation they were having a along the way when they heard that Jesus was coming. Maybe the paralyzed man was saying, Come on, guys, we got to go. Come on, today's the day. I'm, I'm excited. I've heard what Jesus is doing. Together, we can do this. And they were cheering each other on. Again, my, uh, my affinity for basketball at this time of season. It, it, takes, it takes so many people, cheerleaders in, in the crowd and the coach and the team. And it's not just the star who's dribbling down for the last shot. Sometimes the people in the room carry the other people. And then sometimes it's the... It's the water boy on the end who's inspiring everybody. So I don't know, I can't say for certain what the, the, the attitude or the perspective of this, this paralyzed man was, but I gotta believe that there was some affection there between the four friends and the paralyzed man and that somehow together they, they came up with a kind of faith that moved Jesus into action. And when, and when he saw them and he said, your sins are forgiven, immediately the teachers of the law, instead of saying, well, that's wonderful, this man came, he's got his sins forgiven, uh, they began to think in their heart, who does he think he is? Who does this guy think he is coming into this town, into this house, into this place, and, and doing all this, all this disruption and everything that's going on? And, and Jesus could sense in his spirit what they, what they were thinking. And he said, why are you thinking this thing, these things? Which is easier to say to, to this paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up, take your mat, and walk. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. This, this title, Son of Man, was was not just a, 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 a title talking about his humanity, it was also a title talking about his divinity. And as, he was, as they were looking at his divinity, he said, you know, only, you're right, only, only God can forgive sins. Here's the good news. I'm Jesus, God in the flesh, and I'm here. And you're correct, only God can forgive sins. But to show you how, how, that, how true that is, and he, and he looked at the other, the man, and said to him, I tell you, get up and take your mat and go home. And he got up and took his mat and walked out in full view of, their, of, of them all. I'm going to come back to verse, the rest of verse 12 in a second. There are other scriptures this morning, morning that point us to the importance of having faith in community. Matthew chapter 18, verse 20 Jesus says, for where two or three of you are gathered in my name, there I am with them. No matter what we're going through, it's important that we don't go through it alone. We need to have people praying for us. We need to be, we need to be praying for other people, encouraging others, whether it's through a card or a, um, just a phone call or stopping by or taking someone somewhere. I've already mentioned Hebrews 10, 24, and 25. Let us consider how we come together and, and love one another, encourage one another to love and good deeds. In Mark, 12, Mark 2, verse 12, the rest of it, it says, uh, after he walked out, it says, This amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. Certainly it was a miracle that Jesus was doing, but it was also a miracle of, of friends coming together to make sure that their friend received a, a tremendous blessing and was touched by Jesus. We've heard that song before, and they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love, and they'll know that we are Christians by our love. John 13, 35, Jesus says, by this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. It doesn't say that you will, everyone will know that you are disciples if you know all the creeds. It doesn't say that you will know that you are my disciples if you know all of the church history that's ever been written. 
It doesn't say that if you know all the theology and you're the greatest theology in the room that people will know you're my disciple. The Pharisees, the religious leaders, they knew all of the things that they'd studied. They, they were as religious as anyone and Jesus said that they were still lacking. But what Jesus says is if everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. One of the things I, I, I found this week, it was uh, sitting around, was the, the little card, the, the uh, thing that Chris gave us, gave us to look at and to see where, what ways we might make a difference. Sometimes it's a big difference. It takes a lot of time, a lot of effort. But God can use us both in big and small ways to make a difference in the world around us. If you're looking for opportunities to make a difference, there are things on here. I've got, I've got just the back side of this, this fold-out was uh, very, very uh, moving for me. Uh, the the cards, card ministry, cards for illness, holidays, birthdays, anniversaries, encouragement. Maybe you can't get out and, and, and you're physically not able to get out and do things that you once did. But many of us can still write a card. Maybe, uh, maybe we can type something, as, as I think Paula has been doing a lot of typing of the cards, and, and you would not want me to write you a lot of notes because I, I, I write, my handwriting's gotten to be so bad, I'll have to give it to Linda sometimes and say, could you tell me what you think I was trying to say? Um, but I can type, I can text, as long as I make sure I spell check didn't get me. Sometimes that doesn't work out too good. Uh, being in tater, you know, one of the things that we do, sometimes it's as simple as taking out the trash. Uh, that, that's one of the biggest things. I think Michelle, I saw, she said, you know, one of the biggest blessings that somebody gave her uh, this last time were people that were there to help clean up. She, they're here all day cooking, and you can't, maybe you can't be here all day cooking. Maybe it's just filling up some trash cans, and that's, that's the blessing that you give. Home visitation calls or maybe stopping by, meals ministries, helping to provide. Some of you love to cook. That's good because a lot of us like to eat. And uh, you, can, you can make a difference just providing a, a meal, as a, a few of you have done for Linda and me these last uh, couple of weeks. That What a difference it makes. to, Because, uh, you know, I can, again, I can watch some stuff. I can take the dog out. I can do a lot of things. But if you're dependent on me to cook for you to, to be sustained, you're in big trouble. So thank you for all who've, who've made a difference and have been one of the four, metaphorically, lifting us up to Christ. Special events and meals, Driving Miss Daisy. We've got a ministry here. Anybody, did y'all remember the movie Driving Miss Daisy? I think it might have been a book too. And we've got a ministry where we've got a person or two that will take somebody that can't get there on their own. It needs to go to a doctor or someplace. And uh, maybe you've got, maybe you're a good driver, you like to drive, or you don't get into too many accidents, and so you think, well, I could be used, and, and you can, there's a place that you could be used. Food pantry and connecting threads. This is just one of our ministries, and one of the things that's, that I've read over and over uh, the last uh, couple of years is that one of the big things that has happened during the, this COVID time is that volunteerism has, has had a, a sharp decline in all organizations. We've become kind of scared of being out. We've become cautious of being um, with crowds or taking a risk of something that might happen. We, we've become homebodies and we found that maybe now I've got some free time. But the other thing I, I, I have been reading over again is that we are created, we are created wired up that when we help other people, there's something in our brains, there's something inside of us that makes it releases endorphins. It releases things that, that make us feel better that when we're helping other people, we're, we're contributing to our own well-being. That may be a little selfish, but if that's a benefit of helping other people is that you feel better, so be it. Let's, let's help more people to feel better and get off some of these drugs that we're on and every time somebody turns around there's somebody giving us another prescription what if we got active and cared for people and loved people and felt better I, th what I see this morning in this passage is a reminder that we need each other whether it's in the choir whether it's in the in the pews whether it's at home that we're called to be Christians together 
And I hope that you'll go back and reflect on this passage and, and see maybe where you might, might have fallen in that story. Uh, that's one of the beauty of stories of Christ and things that maybe, maybe you were just to, if you go back and imagine, where would I have been in that story? Maybe just someone standing at the door. Maybe someone on the side of, of, of this, this mat. Maybe the guy on the mat. Maybe there have been times when you felt like you were just down on, down on the count and some people came and lifted you up. And give thanks to them. Write them a note. I know so many of people, I'll ask them, well, how did you ever get involved in that ministry? And they'll say, because somebody shared that ministry with me. And I appreciated it so much that I wanted to pass that thing on. So I want to encourage us not to become uh, those folks that uh, the basketball games that are only up in the stands. Uh, I want us to be out and be encouraged to be active and make a difference for Christ. I believe that was a day that a, a, a paralyzed man was brought and laid at the feet of Jesus. Believe it. I believe that, that Jesus told him to stand up. It doesn't say he even laid hands on him. just told him, get up, stand, get your mat, and go home. And a miracle happened. And I want us to continue to pray for miracles. I don't know what your need for a miracle is today or how God might, might, uh, might answer that. I think sometimes we fail to pray for a miracle because we don't want to fail in our prayer. We don't want to fall short and, and, and look silly, but it's okay for the kingdom of God. Jesus didn't tell us that we need to be worried about what other people think about our prayers or how, we, how, how, how much we reach out in Christ. What he asked us to do was to be faithful. So I encourage you today to go out and look for opportunities to pray for somebody, to help somebody, to be with somebody, to be the hands and feet of Christ and make a difference in our world. Let's pray. God, throughout the Bible, we're called to be together, to worship together, to work together. Uh, where two or three are gathered in, in your name, you're right here in our midst. God, help us to, to make sure that we are keeping our faith balanced by, by staying in community I sometimes as an only child, I, I'm, I just, it's, it's easier just to do things on your own and to, to handle things by yourself, but that's not how you created us. It's not what you created us to do. So I pray that all of us might lean on one another and that together we can do more than we ever imagined or hoped. In Jesus' name, amen. Lord, here's my life. I want to be true. 
us to, uh, to lift up in, in prayer and remember um, as, as we pray, we're like one of those four around the map. We're lifting up people, we're praying for them, we're taking them to Jesus, and when we pray, we, uh, we don't always know exactly what to pray. I don't, I don't think that those four that took their friend, even though they went to great effort to put him down through the roof, they didn't know exactly what it was going to look like. They didn't come with their demands or their uh, they're, they're what, they, what they wanted Jesus to do. They just knew that their friend needed to be healed. And so they, they left him in Jesus' hand and said, Jesus, he's yours. So I want to ask us this morning to pray, uh, to keep praying for Sue Hudson and her current health concerns. Just lift her and Luther up. And uh, we, we, we pray for healing, but we, we pray that Jesus does maybe even more than what we might pray. Carolyn Frost has been in the hospital for a couple of days and uh, having some shortness of breath and they've ruled out a whole lot of things but they haven't found out what it is. So, so keep praying for Carolyn and Stan and, and just, uh, just ask that God would heal her. Victoria DeLong has been having some health issues and uh, she was with some, uh, some family when she had an episode and is back home uh, just, just recovering. So pray for Victoria uh, DeLong, and I also want to pray uh, uh, pray for, for Mike and Diana Salerno. D Diana had, uh, she's got some complications in, in, eye, in her eye, and, and they did some surgery, and it looks like it's successful, but just pray for healing and with those complications uh, that they don't cause any further complications, so pray for Diana. want to uh, congratulate, want to end on a congratulations this morning. Uh, Riley and Aaron Pruitt have a new addition to their family, little baby Rylan. So uh, we're, we're excited for Riley. Uh, I called and talked to, to Riley for a few minutes, and the uh, first thing he said was, who's this? And I said, well, it's, it's Pastor Brian. And I said, uh, congratulations on your baby. I said, you know, I remember holding you when you were this, this little. And now Riley, he's, he's, he's just, he's a big fellow, and he's got his own family. And it just, it just reminded me, um, you know, all the kids that have come through this church over the years, and young families, and the people that 
uh, the kids that have grown up and some of the, the young people that we still have. Um, but I think as we look out or if you're going back and looking on a, on a, at a Sunday service, you might see a, a little bit more of our gray hair uh, than you see some of our young kids. And so a lot of people make, uh, they make decisions about, they visit us several times before they come, but they visit us online, online, whereas before they would come and see how friendly we are, and then they would stick around whether we had a lot of kids or not. So uh, as, I, as I thought about it, you know, we, we uh, uh, I was texting with, with another friend about another family who had left years ago and why they had left, and I said, well, they were in search of the Better Youth Program. And they went from this church to that church, and then I saw them again, and they had left that church because, oh no, they found another church with a better youth program, and oh no, the kids never got involved in that church either, so they went to another church looking for the better youth program. Um, I, I, I think we do want to pray for the, the kids in our family, our church family, our community, and, and I think for, uh, God's been so good about giving us more and more uh, folks, as, as we've lost folks, God's brought in some more families, and we're very thankful for that. Um, but but we're, we're not going to attract young families because we've got the best, biggest youth thing, the, the mo most hip, hip music program, rock and roll. Sorry, you guys do a great job, but none of us were. Uh, <laughs> the pastor, I said, you know, I look at and I look and I go, well, I see part of the problem right there. He's right here. All the gray hair that I've got is not going to attract a lot of young families and kids. So what I would like for us to do is to bring our kids, our families, these young people before Jesus and uh, make it a regular part of your prayer life. I, I believe that God could fill this place up with, with uh, young families and children and babies. And it's just healthy for a church to have young families in a church. I love every one of you. wouldn't want to replace you for any, anything. But it's important that young people and, and kids. So let's, let's trust that God will bring us who he wants to bring us and, and to help us to, to, to do what we can. Maybe he'll inspire us with, with something that we haven't thought of yet. So I want to invite you. It's not on a card anywhere, but I want to invite you to pray with me and to see what God might do to keep us young, vibrant, healthy. On the other side, my, my, my daughter was going to a church and she said they didn't have anybody over 40 years old and and one of their prayers on a regular basis was lord send us some older people to give us some wisdom and to give us some balance so we all all are looking for different things and we have a we have so much wisdom as i look out right here there's so much wisdom out here that needs to be shared with some young families and some and people like riley who are looking for uh, someone to walk along beside him and, and raise their family. That's my other sermon for this morning. Let's pray. God, all our, all our concerns, all our worries today, we lay before you. We, we, the people we've mentioned, the ones that we've not, we, we just bring them to you on a mat. Lord, help us to do, to do the digging in prayer to get, get our, our prayer request just to, to lay them before you in Jesus name and to trust that you will do miracles God I pray for uh, for Riley and his family that they would just uh, thank you for that, that that more more young people are coming into the world and we thank you for them God we also pray that we might be uh, the the kind of church that prays and opens we're always friendly to people that come in here and and uh, God, help us to, to, to the young families around this, this community. Lord, help us to be ready. Help us to pray. Do what we can. And God, just uh, you've had this church here for so many generations for a reason and a purpose. And I don't think you're done with us yet. We come before you in a moment of quiet to give you thanks and to praise you. Lord, we come.
God, we also come this morning and we pray for peace. We continue to pray for all of the, uh, all the people in Ukraine and, and all the violence and every terrible thing that's going on over there. I, I pray you'll give them strength, encouragement, wisdom. Uh, God, just uh, to help that, that travesty just to, to cease. Lord, I don't know what it will take for, for, for the Russian army to turn around and go home or what that will look like. If from my perspective, it doesn't look good. But God, I, I read in scriptures where the underdog, your underdog, wins over and over again. So Lord, I pray for the, for the people of Ukraine, the mothers, the fathers, the grandmothers, uh, the aunts, the uncles, the children. God, that you would, would pour out your mercy and that you would show us ways that we might be an instrument of your peace and that we might help in that situation if possible. Help us to seek your will today and always. And to that, that end, we pray that prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for your continued faithfulness in giving. Our offering plates are out back. We have the, have the slot in the door over there. Online works great and it's been working good for all of you. Thank you for your continuing to give. Just, I just want to encourage you to continue to, to, to give as an expression of your faith, uh, as an outgrowth of your prayers, and the decision that between you and God you've decided to make, uh, that, you would, that you would bless others as God has blessed you. God loves a cheerful giver. Until next week, happy spring. All of us get out our nasonex and all of our inhalers and all those things that, that need to come. Um, it, it's amazing what some of us will put up with for a little bit of sunshine. I, I, I have a headache for most of the spring, most springs, so I'm always allergic to something, and I always say, I don't care. I'm just so happy to see the sunshine and see, see the, the flowers blooming and all those sorts of things. So if, I, if you see me looking at you like this, it's a sinus headache. I'm not mad at you. So uh, may God bless you and keep you, make his face to shine upon you. May the peace of God which passes all understanding be with you today, today, tomorrow, and always. God bless you. Go in peace. If the arms where you meet us, take me there, take me there. If what you need is just an offering. It's right here. My life is here, and I'll be a living sacrifice for you. You'll refine the refiner. I want to be consumed. I want to be tried by fire. Purified. You take whatever you desire. Lord, here's my Bye-bye.
purify.